Busan International Airport. It is September 4th, 2020, and I'm about to begin my journey to Minnesota, my 50th state, and see the Great Lake region. So here we go. I have been to all 50 states, so pretty exciting stuff. Um, 50 by 25, and I will be 25 in eight days, so I just made it. Um, anyway, uh, I'm pretty tired right now. Um, also, I'm not engaged. Um, this is just for solo female travel, you know, helps to be safe so people don't think your prey as much anyway um not engaged uh but anyway um pretty exhausting day at the airport um airports i should say and i just picked up my nissan sentra um which ended up being a lot more expensive than i thought because they had waived the 25 fee uh for August, but not for September. So I had to pay about 200 more dollars than I thought. So I pay, I'm paying four times as much for my rental car as I am for my flights. It is what it is, you know, saved up a lot for this moment. So I'm just gonna enjoy it and just let the next paychecks just go to that. Um, Anyway, um, here I am in my bed and breakfast. Um, I don't know if there's a way to turn the camera around while you're filming. No? Okay. Um, this is my little bed and breakfast. Um, it's like a little private suite. There's the entrance. Um, really cute little bed. There's a little fireplace here. Um, which is really cute. Um, yeah, a little, you can get the TV. Um, there's some, everything you need here. Little kitchen, um, washer and dryer, and a little private guest bathroom. So, it's a really cute little spot. Oh, look, the Aurora. I'm not getting my hopes up for the Aurora. I've just, you know, been checking the forecast every day. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so here I am in Minnesota. I don't know if I'm gonna get some food today or anything. Um, but yeah, so we'll figure that out. I'm gonna go shower and rest a bit. Howdy, so here I am. Um, my first adventure today. Today is um, Saturday, September 5th. My first adventure on this trip is actually in Wisconsin. Islands National Lakeshore um, National Park Service. Um, this is the first time I've ever been to a national shore uh, of any kind. So looking forward to that. Um, gonna be doing a kayak tour today um, of the lake shore because that's the best way to see it. There's a bit of a uh, complication getting that booked. Um, but uh, this trip, I'm trying not to do anything indoors, and I know the VC is closed. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, yeah. So anyway, this trip um, didn't really mention it yesterday, but um, my first impression of Minnesota is. 10,000 lakes? That seems like a low estimate. Because flying in, both to Minneapolis and up here to Duluth, uh, 
so many lakes. Um, so um, that's my first impression, all of the lakes that there are here in Minnesota. Um, and of course, um, something I was looking forward to just as much as being in Minnesota itself, um, uh, seeing Lake Superior, uh, you know, the, the big lake. Um, really excited to learn more about it and see it. Uh, of all the regions of the country that I've been to, and I've been to 50 states, I know least about the Great Lakes region. Um, it blows my mind how a lake can so big and wild and stuff and so I'm excited to get out on the lake and um, yeah see what there is to see about it and seeing it as we were flying into Duluth it, I don't know it, it, it kind of it blows my mind how it's not you know the ocean because it looks like the ocean um so really excited to get out there on the lake um, and learn more about it and kayak today. So um, pretty exciting stuff. I will report back once I have visited the lake shore. And uh, yeah, excited for today. Howdy, and here I am at the Possible. to take a kayak trip today. Oh no, my mask is um, I did get to go on a kayak trip today. Um, got to see some sea caves, which was really impressive. That's what you really want to see when you're here. Um, didn't want to get my phone out for a video because I didn't want to drop it in Lake Superior. Get it so it doesn't work. Um, but yeah, I got to kayak a little bit. Now I'm just here in Little Sand Bay, uh, looking over what looks like the ocean. It's incredible to me. Um, lake Superior. Um, but yeah, wonderful lake here that I'm looking at. Something interesting to me um, about this area is that the islands here are forested and you know one might think oh yeah that's obvious Kayleen but I was just thinking it was kind of like a sandy island just like sandy beach island but no not so you can see kind of in the distance here uh, these islands of the um, Apostle Islands so uh, pretty sore from my kayak ride um, this morning sore and it's not just my arms that are sore it's also my legs because I got to ride in a kayak that had a rudder in it so that was new and it made it a lot easier with regard to steering um, but uh, yeah legs are sore arms are sore I hope it won't be too bad tomorrow but um, yeah here we are at my first National Lakeshore overlooking the greatest of the Great Lakes. Hi, I just went for a swim in Lake Superior. And that was fun. Um, not planned. Um, I wasn't gonna go swimming in Lake Superior, um, but brought the swimsuit just in case, because you know me. Y'all know me. Of course, I'm not going to swim. But yeah, because of that, I didn't bring a towel. So I just get to sit here on a Wisconsin beach and dry off. And I'm going to be such a sandy mess. 
gonna get back in the rental car. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't even bring a towel in my car. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was really nice. Um, not too cold, um, not unbearably cold. Um, yeah, it was, it was nice. Um, went and I, I started to like swim, swim, but then my muscles were like, no, you've kayaked already today. So, um, didn't end up swimming, but I kind of just floated around for a little bit. Um, yeah, so, uh, unintended swimming in the Great Lakes in Lake Superior. Um, also, I have a question. At what age do the adults decide to not swim anymore? And you know, the kids do, because adults just sit there. Like, just end up sitting there. And the kids and me end up swimming. Um, I don't know how that ever went away from me. So, uh, yeah. Uh, hoping to warm up soon here. Wisconsin mac and cheese. And there's Wisconsin. Hello, little friend. Hello. Psst, 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 psst. Oh, it's a chunky one. Hello. Hi. Can I pet you? cute cat. I just want to say it's so stressful not having a plan. Like tomorrow I'm going to drive the North Shore up to Grand Portage and there's some stops I want to stop at for, but for the most part it's just me driving and doing whatever I feel like and that just makes me feel uncomfortable. Like I need to have a plan. I need to have a plan. Right, well today is the day we're going to drive up the North Shore of Minnesota all the way from Duluth to Grand Portage um, I just kind of glanced at the list to see what might interest me and the first thing is the Two Harbors Lighthouse uh, Minnesota's only operating lighthouse um, on the National Register of Historic Places um, that's about 26 miles up so hopefully we can stop there and see what there is to see cool. I got to see a freighter. Uh, really wanted to see one of those. I'm sure I would, but got to see that. So next on my list, uh, Gooseberry Falls State Park. This was recommended to me by the kayak tour guide. Um, yeah, so we're gonna see what that's about. So the state park's packed, so I wasn't even gonna try to go to the state parks I was planning to stop at today. Um, but next on my list was Iona's Beach and Scientific Area. Um, looks pretty neat. They say that there is rhyolite there. And of course, rhyolite um, is what Chiricahua's um, rocks are made out of. So we're gonna go explore this scientific area here. A lot less crowded. And nice little trail overcast today. Um, so yeah, excited to see what I can see there. Well, this is really neat. There's like no one here. Pretty awesome. And uh, here's that rhyolite. That igneous volcanic rock sheared off of those cliffs over there uh, by the quote, power of Lake Superior. The waves um, in this natural this natural area uh, brought all these pebbles down, all these bright light rocks. Um, 
and then erosion made them smooth like this. Uh, they say you can't take any of them, so it stinks, but whatever. Oh, look, the cairn. I'm gonna go destroy that. Howdy, here I am at Grand Portage National Monument. Um, it's drizzling right now, it's really nice. Um, good view of the lake, very appropriate weather, I would say, for this area. It's really nice. Um, not a lot of people here either. Far less crowded than the destinations uh, lower on the North Shore Drive. Um, yeah, so very peaceful. I think I'm going to try and take a hike. Um, yeah, we'll figure that out, but um, we're in Portage National Monument. It's just very, very peaceful here. I'm here at Grand Portage National Monument um, and I'm on a little dock here overlooking Gitchigami or what the native people here called the lake. Um, it's very nice. I'm all by myself here. Um, you know, I was passing a lot of places that were packed uh, coming in but uh, Grand Portage is basically on the Canadian border. That might be Canada, I don't know. Um, but it's like on the Canadian border. Um, and so there's not a lot of people here today. And so I'm just kind of watching the swells here come up on the dock. The, the Grand Portage National Monument preserves um, two main stories. There's the Ojibwe people, um, who were the native people that lived here. There is a little reconstructed village that I just passed on the way in. Um, and it also preserves the story of the Northwest fur trade, um, which was a really interesting story to learn about. There's a canoe house, um, and learning about all the different canoes they had here. Um, they built a lot of the canoes and each one had a different purpose um, that, you know, had different purposes for whatever they were bringing or who they were bringing along. So learning about those different kinds um, and just hanging out here. Like, COVID aside, this is just nice for solitude, peace purposes, you know, just standing here on the lake, um, really enjoying today. The weather's very nice. Um, yeah. Hello, Canada. Would love to visit and all, but we're trapped in America because we suck. You can see there's no traffic on that bridge. I wish I was on the other side. Minnesota's tallest and that forms the international boundary between the United States and Canada. So, hi Canada! Good morning! Today is the day. It is Monday, September 8th. And today is the day I'm going to Isle Royale National Park! Um, very excited about that. And I know that most people pronounce it Isle Royale but that neither makes sense nor sounds good. So it's Isle Royale, that's how it's spelled. Um, but I'm gonna go to Isle Royale today, the most remote and least visited park in the lower 48. Um, it's a little island in the middle of Lake Superior. Well, not in the middle, but it's uh, an island in Lake Superior, part of Michigan, um, even though it's closer to Minnesota. But uh, to get there, you either have to do plane or boat, and the boats are closed due to COVID. So we got to take a seaplane today, which I'm a bit nervous about. Um, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be fun, um, and I'm going to get to spend the day there in Isle Royale. Um, 
can't wait. Very excited to go there. It is breezy and I'm hoping this does not affect my trip. Um, but anyway, yeah, something else we have to do is we have to bring clothes and supplies and food for two days because sometimes, um, on rare occasions, but it happens multiple times during the season, um, the weather is too, um, not good enough for you to travel back. So you might get stuck on the island of which the park rangers would give you shelter. Um, but you gotta have your own stuff. So I'm getting that together before I take off here. I'm hoping I can go because it's really breezy. Much deep. That's a lake. Well, I was right to be concerned about the wind because they just called and there is a delay. Um, yeah, delay due to the wind. Uh, the lady said they have to actually start in Houghton, Michigan, and then they have to drop folks off at the island and then they'll come here to Grand Marais. And so she said, she's like, you can go back to town um, and I'll go ahead and give you a call. Here's the wind. Uh, I'll go ahead and give you a call when uh, when it's gonna go, and when I give you a call, you'll have like 45 minutes to get to the little county airport, um, which I was just at. So I'm hoping that if it wasn't looking like I could go, she'd be upfront about it. I hope that that's the case. I hope she's saying it's delayed because it's probably just gonna be delayed because they know the forecast. Um, I'm really hoping I can go. Uh, these things happen. Um, I'd rather be safe than, um, than risk it going out too windy. So I'm not gonna be upset if I can't go. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna be upset at them, uh, but I'm just gonna be upset because I really wanna go. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping that I will get to. I'm in town right now. I'm probably just gonna walk um, to the little scenic uh, walk here right by my hotel. Uh, I might see what restaurants have takeout. I, I really want to go to the little restaurants. One of my favorite things about like small towns like this. Um, I love going to the small little restaurants. Um, can't do that. I mean, I can, but I'm not going to. Um, yeah, uh, stay tuned. I'll let you know if I can go. <laughs> I'm in the airport, and looks like we are a go for this. Um, hoping they get here all right. Um, here, it's 30 minutes before uh, departure time. Here are the planes. So. Hoping all goes well, but uh, as of now, it's a go. I'm just waiting here in the terminal. Yeah. where I'm planning to go today. I'm going to Windigo, the south side. But um, the other passenger needed to be dropped off here and they did here first. So that means that I get a little scenic flyover of um, 
Isle Royale. So didn't sign up for that, but that's really awesome. Um, yeah. Anyway, here I am, Rock Harbor, and uh, next stop is gonna be Windigo. So here I am in Windigo um, on Isle Royale. I did just get to have a front row seat for that landing, which was really cool. Um, awesome experience, awesome experience getting to get an aerial tour uh, without that being planned, you know. Got to see the entire island, got some good footage of that too. So right now I am headed off to the visitor center to check in with the park rangers and uh, see what I can do here in my few hours that I've got. So I'm um, really excited to be here at Isle Royale National Park. Superior duckies! It is September 8th, um, and I just got back from Isle Royale National Park, which was um, a great adventure, and I'll kind of debrief my day here. Um, so first off, as you know, the plane was delayed, but thankfully it got up. Um, Never been in a small plane before. It was a little bit nerve-wracking at the start. Um, and it was definitely more turbulent than your typical commercial airliner. Um, but it was an adventure. So we flew off in this little plane. Um, and um, like I also said earlier, the other passenger was going to Rock Harbor, which Isle Royale is a Long Island, um, Rock Harbor is at one end, and Windigo is at the other. And I was going to Windigo because those cheap those tickets were cheaper. Um, but they were gonna stop at Rock Harbor first. And this was awesome for me because I got to have an aerial tour of the whole island. We got to fly right over it, and let me just say that if you have the funds, I would highly recommend taking a seaplane over Isle Royale because it's such an interesting archipelago. It has, if you're looking at it from the sky, there are the islands of trees and then each island kind of gives, gets a bit larger under the water, gets wider. And so you're looking down at this turquoise water that is really beautiful and has the island sticking up, but you can see it spread out under the water there. Um, it's also just beautiful to see the islands in the water. Um, and, you know, had I just had to gone just straight to Windigo, I would not have gotten to see the whole island. I would have just gone to the southern tip and then come on back. Um, but uh, I was very glad I got to do that. Um, the pilot kind of phrased it like it was an inconvenience to me, like, oh, we're sorry, we're gonna have to drop them off first, but I'm like, no, like, give me this aerial view of the park. So that was really impressive, and I think that was one, like, my favorite part of the park, seeing it from that angle. Um, so we fly in, and, um, I was anticipating the landing. I was like, oh goodness. And I actually caught it on film, um, our descent. And as we were descending, it was kind of um, a little bit, um, eh, 
bit uncomfortable uncomfortable because it looked like we were just gonna crash into the water because you're not used to landing on water you're just gonna crash that's what it was looking like but um, we landed and it was fine um, it was just kind of like a normal airplane landing but then it got bumpy 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 because it was skidding across the water and then it just basically became a little boat so that was really cool um, seeing the, the seaplane experience and then once I got there I checked in with the ranger um, we chatted it up um, Isle Royale their visitor center is open but they only allow one party in at a time and since it was by myself it was just me and the ranger in the visitor center and Isle Royale gets so few visitors anyway that it that's totally fine and there wasn't anyone waiting behind me or anything um so you know i i skipped a meal to buy the book death in the great lakes um for those who don't know i have a trip budget and sometimes if i want to do something special i skip a meal that's not very healthy but i got the book death in the great lakes looking forward to reading that one um and then I started out on the trail. I asked the ranger, I'm like, what would you recommend for my time frame? Um, I'm going to be back on four, um, four central time is when I need to leave. Also, by the way, Isle Royale is the furthest west that the eastern time zone is in. So I was technically on eastern time because I was in Michigan. Um, but yeah, basically I was like, I need to be back at four central. And he's like, you should do the Grace Creek Overlook Trail, which is 3.6 miles round trip. So I started out on this trail. It was beautiful. Um, I don't want to make this video too long. Too late, kind of, huh? Right. Um, just lush green going through this trail. The air was crisp and fresh. The trail was empty. I was the only one on the trail. Um, I just had it to myself. Me and Isle Royale. You could hear a lot of crickets and a lot of wind and it does follow the shoreline for a little bit so I was hearing those waves uh crash up they weren't big waves but they were they were crashing up on Lake Superior um on the shore there so that was really nice and you know it's just a very peaceful walk it was just a lot of greenery um it reminded me a lot of east coast parks but um just without anybody there and it was also interesting because once I got to the overlook you're just basically overlooking wilderness. And I was sitting there and I was thinking about it and I'm like, this is the most pure wilderness I've ever experienced because no one lives on Isle Royale except the rangers, um, you know, but they, they're seasonal. So there's no inhabitants of Isle Royale. It's just empty and so because it's not even visited in the first place, there's not a lot of facilities. So I was just looking at this tr these trees just stretching on. It was just me, it was perfectly quiet. And I was like, this is pure, pure wilderness here. Um, which was very uh, pleasant to experience. I really, really enjoyed that and enjoyed taking that in. Um, so I spent my time doing that. I was just walking along. Um, Definitely want to come back and hike the one end of the island to the other. That's a backpacking trip. I'd love to do that someday, uh, but not today. Uh, just a quick visit because my itinerary is short. Um, but I'd love to do that. And finally, as we were nearing the end of the journey, um, I was waiting for the plane and there was another couple there as well. Um, but uh, the ranger came by and she was answering some questions and so I asked a question that I thought of which was um, where is the um, Kamloops and the Kamloops is a ship that sank in 1927 and it is right off the coast of Isle Royale I was like where's the Kamloops and she's like oh it's in Todd Bay you passed over it if you're looking at the island it's straight and then there's a big dip it's that first big dip that you see on the north end so I was able to see that and um, I remembered where that was and it's a it's a shipwreck um, and uh, it's called 
um, the most haunted shipwreck. Um, just because all the divers that go down there, they frequently see a ghost of a gentleman. And there's also human remains down there. Um, because it's so, so cold down there that this corpse from the 1920s, who has just stayed down there, it's been preserved. And obviously not much of a person. It doesn't really look like a person if you're looking at it. Um, it's kind of filled with this corpse wax substance and it just looks like a big white blob. I think there's a single photo on the internet of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, and also what's really striking about the Kamloops is that, um, everything on the ship is just pristine. It's almost, um, otherworldly. Like, divers go down there and it's eerie because there's not a lot of wreckage. Not a lot of things broke. There's still items down there that look just like normal items. Um, so it's kind of eerie in the fact that it just looks like a ship. It's just underwater and uh, sunken. Um, all the passengers perished on that one. Um, some made it to shore um, only to have evidence of wolf attacks um, there. Others were found in their life vests floating around and there's a couple of corpses still down there. Um, so where's the Kamloops? And she told me, but she was kind of like taken aback. She's like, why'd you ask about the cam loops? You know, I, she was kind of giving me like, it's not normal for a young woman to come asking about the cam loops. And I was like, I'm just a ship nerd. Cause it's true. Um, but yeah, uh, she, she was like, why are you asking about the cam loops? And I'm like, mm. so that was really neat. And um, the final taste is that the couple I traveled back in my seaplane with to the mainland, get this. So we start our conversation and she's like, Where's your, where are you from? And I'm like, I'm from Denver. And they're like, us too. And so we bonded over that. And I'm like, yeah, I've done some of the 14ers. You know, why are you here? <laughs> 50th state. Um, and uh, we were talking and she's like, you sound like our kind of person. And I'm like, mm, awesome. Um, and then, you know, that conversation came into, I'm a park ranger at Chiricahua, and I usually f follow up Chiricahua National Monument with really small park, no one's heard of it, but they were like, oh, and it was like a moment, and then they put it together. I had given them a tour, a faraway ranch in January. Wow. And so I had definitely rec recognized the gentleman because he had he had quite a personality. Um he had a, a nice demeanor. Um but uh I remembered him and I it, that was just wild. Like you're on Isle Royale and you run into people that were at Chiricahua National Monument and that you saw and interacted with. I recognize the gentleman. Um, yeah, that was wild. And I told him, you know, next time you're in the Chiricahua area, I'll give you a private tour. So I'll go ahead and do that. <laughs> it was just wild. So, um, you know, we flew back um, and it was all smooth sailing from there. And I immediately called Glory. Um, friend from college who just happens to be in Minnesota at the same time I am. Like, how random, right? Um, <laughs> and so she, uh, she and I met up just now and we had a nice little catch up um, over life and stuff, over some pizza, and then we're gonna get together tomorrow and go into Voyager. And this video is too long, so I'm gonna end it there. But Isle Royale was incredible and I loved it. Howdy! Um, today is Tuesday, September 8th. Yesterday was the 7th. Um, I thought that it was the 8th, but today's the 8th. Um, and I am currently on route to Voyagers National Park. Um, and this is a park that's in northern Minnesota. Um, it's not on the coast. It's a little bit inward. Um, so I'm headed there right now, and the most exciting
exciting part about today is going to be um, getting to uh, hike, getting to hike with Glory and her boyfriend Anthony. Um, that's going to be really fun. Um, so we're going to go to the Ash River area today and do some trails. Tomorrow they're taking off further west, and I still have some time if I want in Voyager's area, so I might. I was thinking of kayaking, but that's probably not very safe uh, by myself, so uh, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. I just need to end up in Duluth, um, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited to explore that national park. All right, here we are in Voyagers National Park. I am here with Glory Casuto. What's up, vlogger? And <laughs> Anthony up here. And we are hiking, I believe it's the Beaver Pond Overlook Trail. We're look, overlooking Lake Cabotagamma. I believe that's how it's pronounced. I could be wrong, um, but we're overlooking this lake here. I got my nice photo for the 50th state. I did a brief interpretation of the Northern Lights. Was I it a know good interpretation? All about it now. Yep. About we had those... information time with Kayleen. Yep, the coronal mass ejections causing the beautiful <laughs> lights that we see here on Earth. Um, but anyway, pretty cool stuff. I'm liking this park. There's not a lot of people here. It's pretty nice. We saw like one person, so. Yeah. Onward and upward. All right. The trail probably doesn't go, downward? yeah, <laughs> it probably doesn't Onward go up down, anymore. Yep. Oh, there's some nice little fall colors. Um, some nice little deciduous trees um, that are changing. Mostly not, but there there's some beginning to. Um, so that's really unique. There's a bunch of pines uh, up here in northern I can delete it if I don't want it. <laughs> All right, here we are. Kayleen is here. Um, we walked down this from the trail and although Anthony and I are all bundled up Kayleen stripped down take a dip. because we felt the water and it felt nice yeah, so it's, it's confusing to me but I'm, she's gonna do I'm, it I'm just gonna go right on in I have other layers I'm being smart well <laughs> no swimsuit but not smart but like it's okay oh my god this is fine I don't want to go too far because it looks like the current is pretty, pretty strong. You can do it. What? Follow your dreams. Woo! Oh. <laughs> is what? it warm? It's fine. Like, it's chilly, but like... <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Just a shot of the scenery. And there's Kayleen out here. Oh, I just want to stay here, but that's probably not practical. We should get going. <laughs> Why? What deadline do we have? I don't know. I don't want y'all just standing there. I don't give a crap. While well, I'm frolicking in this water. I don't care. Oh, this is fun. It's nice with the sun out. It, it's, I don't get why it's warm. Yeah, I don't understand. That's so Some really gorgeous scenery though. And there's nobody here. We're the only ones. Which is why Kayleen is just chilling in her bra, I guess. <laughs> What's she gonna do? I gotta have dry layers available. Facts. Because it is chilly. Like, it's not warm. I think the right. air is colder though. Like, the water is warmer than the air. Anthony is on the log down yonder. <laughs> He's straight chilling. All right. This is fun. It is. <laughs> She's living the dream. Ah, yes. Is it deep? No. Nope. You can just stand. Oh. <laughs> I have a kiddie pool, so I'm used to shallow swimming. I wonder 
wonder if like I just float like where the current will take me. It looks strong, but like Am I going anywhere? No. <laughs> Are you camera shy? Sunset is seven. Good morning. It is September 9th, and here we are in Voyagers National Park, and we are kayaking in Cabotagama Lake. I may have butchered that pronunciation, but let's assume I didn't. So we're here in Cabotagama Lake. We've got Glory here. Hello. And we've got Anthony. And we're just here in our little rental kayaks, having a nice little stroll. There's a little island area. You can see those islands around here. So it's looking like for our tour today, we're just gonna hang out in and around this area and just kind of kayak around these shores. Um, I forgot sunscreen, so that sucks. And I'm probably gonna notice it on my face tomorrow. Um, but it is what it is, you know? can't stop you from living your life or whatever you can't live in fear she says you can't live in fear i mean you can it's safe to but you get the point anyway i'll maybe check in later on one of these islands but here we are in voyagers pretty exciting cabotogama that's how you say the lake of voyagers cabotogama i know i was saying it wrong Anyway, um, I'm here in Duluth, um, waiting for my bed and breakfast person to send me the address. Um, it's afternoon, so I think I'm gonna go and take that lake walk, um, that shows the aerial bridge, uh, that the ships come in, and, um, that seems really interesting to me. Oh god, I got sun. I got sun. I mean... Don't have sunscreen. What do you expect? Um, yeah, I think I'll go take a walk, see that. I wanted to see that before, but it was evening and I didn't want to walk alone, so it's bright out. It should be good. Um, I'll let you know how that goes. Here is what we came here to see. This aerial lift bridge. And this walk is kind of fun because there are ship parts, like ship anchors kind of outlining this area. There's a propeller there, which you can see people for scale. I don't want to put the camera on them for too long. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can see it move. Uh, that'd be pretty cool. It's not too, too crowded. Um, yeah. So yeah, here I am at the canal park and I'm on the lake walk. There's the aerial lift bridge. Um, hoping to see some freighters. I want to learn about the freighters. Like, what are they bringing? Where are they taking it? Where are they coming from? Where are they going? How long are they? How much do they weigh? How many have sunken? You know? How are they named? You know? I saw one at two harbors. Um, yeah, just want to know all this information about them, but, um, and I could find that at a maritime museum. But COVID. Can't go inside anywhere. Can, but I won't. Oh, I really wish I could go to a maritime museum. I wish I could go to the Aquarium of the Great Lakes. Um, I wish I could go to the small restaurants. Um, yeah, it, it is what it is. So, yeah, there's some waves, some boats coming in, but no freighters. I don't know, I'm just fascinated by, I'm fascinated by ships. I'm fascinated by ships. 
Anyway, it's my last day here. I leave tomorrow. Um, really not wanting to go. Really not wanting to go. Here's my background. Really don't want to leave. Um, I was telling Gloria and Anthony that Minnesota is in the top 15 for states. I gotta reorganize the ratings here. You know, I have them off the top of my head because I rank everything. Um, Minnesota's great. Um, yeah, of all the states I've driven to, um, Minnesota has the best drivers. That's for sure. Minnesota has the safest drivers. Um, there we go, the bridge. Um, has the safest drivers, um, and the worst drivers, it is decidedly Kentucky. With a shout out to Indiana. But Minnesota has safe drivers and they're nice and considerate and they go the speed limit and it's very surprising to me. At least in the northern part. I don't know how it is near Minneapolis. Um, yeah, I'm making this video too long with all my ums. But it's my last day here and I'm sad and I'm just enjoying the, just enjoying good old Duluth. Um, really want to come back here soon uh, to the Great Lakes um, and in Minnesota in particular. I really liked this. So, so watching this construction is really entertaining because it is just picking up rocks, like rock by rock, and going over and placing it strategically in the scenic little rock pile. There it goes for another rock. Legend lives on from the Chippewa on down of the big lake they called Gitchagumi. The lake, it is said, never gives up for dead when the sky. So I am departing my final B and B um, here in Duluth, and this house is so unique that I want to give you a film tour of it. So here's the upstairs. Here's the staircase. This was apparently built in the 1800s and was refurbished, is what the description says. So, here's the bottom of the stairs. And this is the awesome room here. Look, look at all these antiques. We have old magazines. Doggo. Lovely plants. Yeah, just look at all this. A little seashell shelf. These books look really old. Um, yeah, just all this really cool stuff. Some dolls. Little trinkets here. Really cute. And here's the living room. It's nice and it's just a really, really cool house. And here is the outside of said house. I was just thinking the other day how beautiful the combinations of turquoise and maroon are and how, I don't know, maybe if I were married, there would be my house. Who knows? So today 
Today is Thursday, September 10th, um, which means that my birthday is in two days. Um, I kind of tried to view this trip as my birthday party because I'm not actually doing anything on September 12th. Um, so I'm kind of trying to view this as my birthday party because it's been a wonderful experience that I've given myself. Um, it's a trip that I'm going to remember forever. So, um, here I am about to leave my 50th state at the age of 24. So, I made my goal. Um, 50 states by 25. Yeah, so I'm not going to do a recap of the trip because I just did this whole video and it's probably pretty long, but it's more for me than anyone else. Um, so no recap, but I will say that my favorite part of this trip, I've been thinking about it, my favorite part was flying over Isle Royale. That was beautiful. It was gorgeous it was unplanned I didn't plan to fly over it but just a beautiful park so not wanting to leave like I said yesterday um, but yeah this will probably be my last video for this, um, this voyage here but uh, learned a lot did a lot celebrated turning a quarter century um, of life so Anyway, uh, farewell till the next the Legend lives on from the Chippewa down of the big lake they call Gitchagumi. Superior, they said, never gives up her dead when the gales of November come early.